The Toyota lights ablaze. Make sure the slower cars see them. Here we go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The Mercedes has taken off. All our life, we were promised a future where cars could fly. We saw it in movies, cartoons, but never in real life. Why? Because the idea seems absurd. I mean, cars don't fly. But what happens when they do? Now, before we get to the main event, we need to go back in time a bit. The year is 1999. Who wants to be a millionaire aired for the first time and America is busy bombing a country for 90 days. More about that in an upcoming video. But for the fans of racing and screaming engines and the smell of burnt rubber, one of the most important events was brewing right around the corner. In France, of, of, of all places. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the fuck? Hence, 24 Hours of Le Mans. For those of you that don't know what 24 Hours of Le Mans is, well, it is one of the most prestigious and challenging automobile races in the world. It is held annually near the town of Le Mans, France, and it is organized by the Automobile Club de la... Uh... How the fuck do I pronounce this? Basically, cars go vroom vroom for 24 hours. Okay? Got it? Good. And this year was supposed to be no different. It was shaping up to be an exciting race with such strong contenders as BMW, Toyota, and Mercedes who were all close contenders for victory. Now the car manufacturer that interests us is Mercedes-Benz. They have arrived with a new and improved, fancy-looking Mercedes CLR. Now this car looks like a fucking rocket ship. Unfortunately, it took some attributes from rocket ships as well, because the damn car wanted to fly. In the warm-up leading up to the race, Mark Webber, aside from having the most beautiful jawline I've ever seen, almost met God himself after his car flipped and landed on its roof. Now there is no footage showing what exactly happened, as we only have footage of the aftermath of the crash. But we will soon learn what led up to this crash. But not by new footage emerging, or a nerd going in depth as to what happened, but by simply having the crash happen again. The Toyota lights ablaze. Make sure the slower cars see them. Here we go. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Aside from creating one of the coolest looking pictures in the history of the universe, one might wonder, how the fuck does something like this happen? Why are Germans flying again? And will they invade Poland? Answer is, no. As to the car flying, there are four factors that made the car fly itself. Those being the design of the car, the track, chasing another car, and the air underneath the car. Basically, the Mercedes CLR was designed to go very fast, but the shape of it made it possible for the car to lift off the ground if the air hit it just right. Combine that with the car hitting a small bump in the most sane straight at high speeds and that the driver was under the pressure of chasing another car and with the car lifting up it made the air coming towards the car go underneath it causing it to go up even further and start spinning. This was one of the few times this car flew but this was the only time it was captured on camera. The driver Peter Dumbreck was okay but Mercedes was not having to leave the sport in shame and never return to this event ever again. On on the other hand, Mark Webber really liked the idea of making cars go fly, so during his F1 career, he decided to make a Red Bull live up to its marketing and give it the wings. What a fucking legend! Now real quick guys, I wanted to thank you for all the support you've been giving to the channel. Like, I can't believe we reached 1k subs. That is insane. Thank you so much guys. And if you guys want to support the channel, there will be a Patreon linked in the description. And in the pinned comment. And of course, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe.
I love you guys. Bye-bye.